Hi there, everybody. Uh, you're looking at a typewriter, an electronic typewriter. It's probably one of the first typewriters that I've picked up in a very long time. Uh, when I was a kid, this was the way I used to type out reports when I was in school. And recently I picked up one of these because I have some kids who are millennials and they thought this was pretty interesting. Anyways, this was a nice find. It's a Panasonic R435 in great shape. It had the cover, everything came with it. I had a few extra daisy wheels. Um, it runs on a tape. It has a liftoff tape. You know, it's a nice, nice typewriter. It's got a spell checker, um, multi-line display, or sorry, multi-character display that you can see. Uh, the words as you type them and you can correct them. It says 14 character display right there. What's nice about this is it shows you how many characters you have to go until you get to the end of the line. Um, you can do justified mode, line by line, or run it as a typewriter. You can choose 15, 12, and 10 characters per inch. Here's your line spacing values and different keyboard options. It's nice. It has memory on it, uh, columns, Great device. You know, if you look at the inside of this thing, it runs on a cartridge and it's pretty good with the cartridge use. I like the way that it doesn't waste tape when you uh, press the space bar, which is kind of interesting. Here's a sample of some type that was justified. I like the underlining where it underlines just the characters, not the spaces, or you can elect to underline the entire line if you wish. Um, I picked 15 CPI. I wanted to get as much type as I could on the page. So that's why I have this little daisy wheel in there. I have other versions of uh, daisy wheel options. I just like this um, this type. It was a gothic 15. It looks nice. So this is not the reason why I wanted to show you all this today. I just wanted to show you that. But then I got a thermal typewriter because I was looking at uh, a YouTube video by Joe Van Cleve and he was going over his Canon thermal typewriters and I have one of these. It's, uh, it is not the greatest typewriter in the world. I, I definitely think it's, um, it has a lot of features that it needs, but uh, for the most part it works. This is thermal fax paper and I was using this uh, thermal typewriter to create kind of a you know, calendar here. But uh, the only thing that I don't like about this, well, many things, is that it only writes in one font size, which is 10 characters per inch. That's all you get. Unless you purchase a cartridge that goes inside here, then you can put other fonts in there, but you're not going to be finding any cartridges today. They're extremely rare. Um, don't like the justification feature either. It actually has it. They took it away in the earlier version and they added it back. The justification feature works okay, but if you have a long word, it will force you to hyphenate that word or erase the word and elongate the line quite a bit because of that. So like if you have um, you know, the word typewriter at the end of your line, it may want you to type in the word type hyphen writer here or have the entire word go down to the next line and then all the words get stretched out a little bit. I don't like that. Um, the other thing is the cartridges are rare and hard to find. Um, I don't use them anyways with thermal fax paper. What I do like about thermal typewriters is they don't leave a trace. There's no cartridge in here. The only thing I have is a piece of paper. When I pulled the cartridge out of this, I saw a 20 year history of this particular typewriter. It started out in a med medical facility and it made its way to a school. Now there was no PHI or PII on there. Well, there was PII, but no PHI. That's personal health information. But there was personally identifiable information on this typewriter's cassette from 20 years ago. I just threw it away. But it was interesting to pull it all out and see it. But then I ran through my shredder. So if you have one of these, you know, this one over here, same issue. 
you need to destroy the cartridge if you are writing things you don't want people to see. So thermal typewriters are kind of neat. Um, here's thermal fax paper. I can run it through as a roll or I can trim paper and put it through here. So it's okay. Uh, it runs on four D cells. What I don't like here uh, about it also is the, no, sorry about that. The power right here, the power inlet input has no um, identification. I know it's six volts, but it doesn't tell me if that center pin is negative or positive. And that really matters because you can destroy it if you have polarity set the wrong way. It's okay, it's nice. I like the carrying case for it. That's really cool. Uh, <clears throat> You know, it, it's okay, it gets the job done. It actually has a data port, which I will never use because I don't think that I will find any hardware that'll allow me to connect this to my computer. But hey, just in case, it's the same thing for this typewriter here. There is a data port, but again, the breakout unit for this, I've seen online for $500 because it's so rare. So yeah, that's pretty bizarre. Anyways, uh, what was really interesting to me was I picked up this Panasonic thermal typewriter and it has awesome features. And it's much like this Panasonic, except for it's thermal. And it came with two cassettes, the black and a cover-up tape for uh, you know covering up mistakes. These are quite rare, so I took them out of there. I don't plan on using them. Again, for security issues, you know that this section here contains some information that somebody wrote. I'm not gonna read that, but just to let you know. Okay, so what's so cool about this is this typewriter has 10, 12, 15 pitch and a proportional font, proportional spaced font. So like the letters I and O occupy different space on the paper versus the same amount of space. That's pretty cool. Um, the, I like the way that the, the settings here can be adjusted just quickly by clicking on these buttons. You know, uh, it's quiet. There's a calculator on here, which is kind of interesting. Six plus seven equals, right? 13. That's kind of neat. Um, yeah, I've never seen that on a typewriter before, <laughs> but okay. Um, what's really nice is you can write margin print, center justify, auto, you know, just have it do a ragged write, automatically return. There's underlining, but the underlining in this particular typewriter will underline everything, spaces included, so you'll have to take that into consideration. It has a double size, which is kind of nice, and then bold. So all that can be done without switching any types of daisy wheels or anything else because it's a thermal writer. I have some examples of the type on here. <clears throat> this is in the 10 CPI mode. As you can see, <coughs> looks pretty nice. Has quite a bit of characters that are supported down here at the bottom. So there's three keyboard settings. It shows the two keyboards here. There's a third one that's not displayed, but if you know where the maps are for them, you can use them. They're not as common to use. <coughs> Excuse me. Everything that you set up for justification and auto returns is set by this code button. Your tab settings and margin settings are here, which is nice. I like the enter button. You know, if you touch that with your pinky, you got this here versus a really unnecessary indentation there. <clears throat> What's unusual about this is that there's a print and density in here. Actually, it's not really unusual, but uh, if you set that, it has almost no effect for thermal fax paper. So you can keep it on the lowest setting. I don't know if that really has an impact on power usage. Um, something that's rare is the type of adapter. So if anybody is going to get a DC power adapter, pay attention to that right there, the polarity. It's a negative tip. 
this is not very common. So it's 7.5 volts negative tip. So the positive is on the outside here, not on the inside. So this is unusual. Make sure that you look at that before you purchase an adapter if you want to power this thing with AC power. I found that kind of un unusual. I think that they did that back in the 1980s to force you to purchase their power adapter if yours failed. And now in today's world, you can easily get those. I'll show you, I'll switch this over to uh, a different mode. You can do line by line or character by character. Here's character by character. So I typed in the word test down there. Or you can switch it back to the mode where it's line by line. Right there. Test again. Okay, it's pretty neat. I'll set the pitch. I'm going to move this up. To proportional space and I'll put it in demo mode. We'll see what happens here if it's any different. So, right there, the character is a little bit different. See how the I and the O have a different spacing versus here that we're at the end of the page. I'm glad that stopped there. Um, so I and the O under international, the I occupies the same space as the letter O, whereas down here, that letter I does not occupy a lot of space. Well, that's kind of neat. So you have proportional fonts. If I go back up, I can put it in a different mode. We'll put it in 15. Oh yeah. I'll turn this off. <clears throat> so I'll just stick it in uh, 15 pitch mode. And I'll do that same demo and you can see it's overwriting areas but you might be able to see some of the type in 15 character per inch but you know it's thermal paper so it just overwrites uh, one of the things that you're not able to do on here is correct it once you try to correct it you'll uh, you won't be able to type on top of it if you're using just the thermal head. This thing is pretty quiet. I like it. Uh, it's nice. You can see a bunch of type on top of each other. I'll see if I can show you an example of 15 CPI. That's 15 CPI. So that's it. Just thought I'd show you what that looks like. Nice portable typewriter. The only consumable I have is the paper itself, and that type looks pretty nice. There's an example of 10 character per inch and 15 character per inch right on top of each other. And then down here, this is an example of the proportional type. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And go get yourself a thermal typewriter.